Hello and welcome back to Good Game Nation where we bring you all things TCG. My name is Preston and today is News Day. So we're going to jump in and go through all the cards that were revealed this week and talk about what we think about them real quick. First we're going to look at the Store Championship Wave 2 promos that are coming with that tournament. The first is Bong Clay from set 1. The second is Jozu from set 2, 2k counter. Nice new art for him with his Devil Fruit activated. Pearl from East Blue Blocker. Never understood if Pearl actually had a, an ability like a Devil Fruit or if that was just something else. We have Hell Meppo, zero, uh, zero Power Hell Meppo. We have Sad Sanji sitting in a chair instead of Sad outside of a window. Nice take on it. Wish I could have seen his uh, manacles in this one. And then we have Shiki the Golden Lion as the last card in the participation pack. Then we have Yamato Secret Rare Alt Art Sleeves. That's a 10 pack for your Dawn. And the winner's card, like it or not, Eustace Captain Kid. The promo from the very, very first promos that we got, the five card pack. Um, check with your store, see if they're doing a store championship, and if they are, get in there. Those are some pretty nice art alt arts for cards that are, most of them are fairly well played, especially the Jozu and the Sad Sanji. Moving on to card reveals, and starting with a card that I completely misunderstood the first time it came up. This is uh, Katori. It came up last week. And Katori is a combo piece with Hatori, a card that came out this week. I read Katori's effect to be self-activating, which made no sense. Uh, so I'm glad to see that I read it wrong and understood it wrong and that there's a card called Hatori that we're talking about this week that helps it. So let's talk about Hitori real quick so that I can go back and understand Katori a little bit better. Hitori, yellow character, 3 cost, 3k power, Sky Island, 1k counter. On play, you may play one Katori from your hand. Add up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 3 or less to the top or bottom of the owner's life face up. So send a 3 or less to the top of your opponent's life. It's a pretty cool removal early on in the game, gives them an extra life, but that's kind of what yellow does. We've seen it with other yellow cards, and it's interesting to get it earlier. And to jump back to Hatori, uh, his on play effect is if you have an Hatori, the other one, K up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal or less than the number of your opponent's life cards. So you'll be able to remove one without KOing, and then KO one with uh, with the Kotori. So it's a cool little combo. I don't know if either of them get played. Like We'll have to see how that archetype works. Um, I also didn't think other combos would get played, and then they get overplayed. So it could just be a bad read for me that I, I think it's weird. Early removal to the life is interesting. Um, the KO is avoidable in a lot of cases uh, for the other. So we'll have to see how it goes. The next up is Robin. Nico Robin, red character, Straw Hat Pirates. 1k counter. On play, K up to one of your opponent's characters with power 1k or less. As always, if I, I didn't mention it quite yet, is I'm taking all of these translations from a One Piece Discord that is always linked in the description. Um, I'd love to, to shout them out. Great community over there. Always has updated stuff and pretty, uh, uh, pretty quick to update as well. Um, this Robin is... Um, pretty good it's a one cost so you're searching it out with uh, curly dadan and uh, we also get revolutionary robin which is great great art as well moving on to our first green card monet green character three cost 1k power don quixote pirates 1k counter blocker unblock rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a 
cost of four or less. So we've seen effects like this before. I believe it's the Uta film Uta, but I could be wrong. Uh, but there's cards that rest cards on, on effect as well, which is really cool. This is a possibility that you get to uh, stop two attacks, and with a cost of four or less is a pretty good range of cards. Um, so I think this card is good. Uh, I can't wait to see how green, purple, Del Flamingo gets rebuilt after this, because they're getting a lot of really good support in this set. And... I really want to see a, a more Don Quixote pirate or Don Quixote family based deck. The next card is John Giant, blue character, 8 cost, 10,000 power, Giant, Navy, counter 1k, no original effect. I'm really enjoying what they're doing with the art in blue this, this set. Uh, we saw it with Garp, we're seeing it now with John, the Giant. Very cool, cute art. Love it that it's going in the archetype of the Sakazuki that we saw really early, the leader card that's just so intense and, and um, like more vivid. So this really cute uh, chibi-ish navy archetype is really cool and I love it. Moving on to Mr. One Daz Bones, purple character, one cost, one K power, Baroque works, one K counter. On opponent's attack, once per turn, Dawn minus one, play up to one Baroque Works type character card with a cost of three or less from your hand. This is um, going part of the purple yellow crocodile archetype where you get to minus Dawn on your opponent's turn and do stuff on your opponent's turn, which is vastly underused in the game currently. But I think this card alone is, is going to. I hope this card alone changes purple a little bit for that archetype because it doesn't get played currently. But I also would have to look at the turn order stuff. If your opponent declares an attack, you get to activate this. You play a blocker. Can you use that blocker that on that attack? Um, so I have to look at the rules to see if it works that way because I think that's a decent minus one to play a, a higher costed uh purple blocker, broke works blocker. So we'll have to see exactly if that's the turn order, because that's interesting, but also just putting another body on the board for um, one instead of their actual cost of three or whatever. Interesting card. Um, I'm all for purple getting support after their first set. We all know purple needs the help up to this point. The next card is a celestial dragon yeesh um saint charlos black character three cost zero power celestial dragon 1k counter your turn if all of your characters have the type celestial dragon then all of your opponent's characters get minus four to their cost so going into the celestial dragon archetype with the worst of them all saint charlos I'm really excited to see Celestial Dragons get an archetype. I really would like to see a counter event that brings an Admiral to the field when a character is KO'd. I think that would be really cool and powerful. Kind of goes against this character's effect, but it would be in theme with what the, the uh, story actually tells. So we'll have to see how that builds out into a full archetype. I don't know how important minuses are in the current builds. They happen, they don't always get used. They're, they're not always uh, used to the most of their ability. They're just kind of there. The big ones like Kuzan and stuff like that, they make an impact. A minus four is pretty big on turn three, on, like uh, at a cost of three. So we'll have to see what happens with this archetype. The next is Choppermon. Choppermon, purple character, 2 cost, 3k power. Animal, straw hat crew, 1k counter. On play, if you have 8 or more Dawn on your field, set up to one of your purple characters with 6k power or less, and straw hat type as active. So when I was looking at this card the first time it, I saw it, it was released in a, a magazine as a preview. I was trying to figure out if it was good. It also came with the next card, which is a Nami. 
or Onami. Um, and I'm just thinking about how purple plays currently and a lot of things that have to do with Dawn requirements don't get played. Luckily this is a eight or more so by the end of the game you can be playing this as a support which actually might see play. Um, but it's just really weird. It's a purple so weird because it doesn't get utilized quite enough so their effects are like I, I don't think we do these things currently and purple often minuses so it gets weird um let's roll into the onami to to kind of i think solidify my thought process on this onami purple character one cost 1k power straw hat crew 1k counter if you have 10 dawn on your field this character gains blocker so as a one cost gaining blocker at 10 dawn feels weird to me especially in decks that minus dawn because it if you're using your other effects this character no longer has blocker and if you're using effects like blast breath or a counter on your opponent's turn or like broke work stuff that happens on your opponent's turn mid turn this character could lose its effect if you play out a sequence which I misplay a lot, so it's going to happen. So it's really weird, um, and I don't think a lot of the stuff gets played like King doesn't get played. There's, I think, a Shiki that is a high Dawn requirement to do a thing, and they don't get played. So I don't know if this is just another bad thing for Purple, um, or it's just a playstyle that people just don't like playing the game like this, and they need to rewrite Purple into an archetype that people want to play that is competitive with red at least luckily in the upcoming sets that have just come out in japan purple red is a thing and we'll have to see how that affects these things luckily this is onami not nami so maybe it's actually searchable by uh, a nami card moving on to this card okay let us Begin the world of violence. Blue event, five cost, four emperors, animal kingdom pirates. Main, if your leader is mixed color, draw a card. Then return a cost five or lower card to its owner's hand. Trigger, if your leader is mixed colors, draw two cards. This is pretty cool. There's a lot of blue, half blue leaders out there now that are pretty good. I think this helps Queen. This could help Rebecca if they choose to play it. Uh, Rebecca's a pretty tight list currently, but there's also blue purple Kaido and a couple other blue decks that might be able to benefit from this since I mean, blue purple crocodile could benefit from this. Just a return card, five, a five cost or a five or lower plus a draw. It's a really interesting card. It's an expensive card, but I wonder if people are gonna play it. I'm not sure if it, fits everything because of the five cost um, up front. I'm on the fence about it. Um, all for removal, not KO though, because there's a lot of cards that can't be KO'd, so you have to remove them. Really interesting. Moving on. When you're at sea, you fight pirates. Purple event, one cost, Wano Country. Main, look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal up to one Straw Hat Crew, Kid Pirate, or Heart Pirate type card, and add it to your hand. Then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Activate main, or trigger, activate this effects main. This is cool. It's a uh, top three search for three different archetypes. Um, all three of those archetypes are in purple with that new starter deck, the ultimate starter deck that just came out in Japan. And uh, I kind of wish that the card art was not just a close-up on Luffy, since the panel is a three-panel of Kid, Law, and Luffy. It is what it is. Uh, Luffy's the, the main character. He's going to get center stage all the time. But since it searches all three, why not? Um, that's my only gripe. It's pretty cool. I don't know if uh, it gets played. It's very uh, generic, so you can play it in any of the three purple decks that just came out. They made one card for three decks instead of three cards for three different decks. We'll have to see if those purple 
decks need this as well. The next is Revolutionary Army General Headquarters. Red Stage, cost one Revolutionary Army. Activate main, you may trash one card from your hand and rest this stage. Look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal up to one Revolutionary Army type card, and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So I don't like this card, first of all. Um, you have to trash a card to gain a single card. So you're not plussing. This is not an ad advantageous uh, stage. Yes, it cycles stuff. Maybe if Revolutionary Army has some stuff to receive stuff from the trash, that might be nice. Because then that's just like a hold in place for an extended hand, or at least one card of it at a time. But I don't think this is generally good to minus one to plus one out of your deck. I'm not sure. I think it's bad. Let me know in the comments if you think it's good uh, and why you think it's good, really, because I feel like it's not a plus, so it probably doesn't get played unless the Revolutionary Army stuff does not get another way to search, which it already has a character. So maybe it doesn't get an event like... Uh, Sub, the Sabaody from set 1 or the Whitebeard Pirates from set 2. Maybe that's what it is. Birdcage, green character, cost of 5, Don Quixote Pirates. If your leader is Don Quixote del Flamingo, all characters with a cost of 5 or less will not become active during both players' refresh phase. End of your turn, if you have 10 Don cards on your field, KO all of the rest of characters with a cost of 5 or less, then trash this stage. So this is a pretty huge effect. It's a fairly expensive. If I'm going to call the 5 cost of an expensive, I'm going to call the 5 stage of an expensive. But this has some impact. On both players' turn, no matter what, your 5 or less are not standing. That's every card in a law deck. For the most part, there's Eustace Captain Kid that gets splashed every once in a while, or a <laughs> Edward Newgate or whatever, but that's every card in Law. As well as a lot of stuff in red that plays weenies, which are which, what I call one-cost cards, low cards, low-costed card decks. So this could be very counter meta and very so much control out of the birdcage. Uh, and then when you're going for game, you could kill them all at the end of your turn so that they have nothing that they can work with. And if you're playing, like, if you get to the 10 cost of Flamingo and you're selecting the other cards on their field, they could just have no cards that they can play. And that's brutal. Um, again, like I said with Monet, I hope that Green plays a heavier Don Quixote family uh, deck and... Uh, we get to see all of that, those characters shine. All right. We are going on to Holy Land Marijois. Black stage, cost one, Holy Land Marijois type. Your turn, the play cost of Celestial Dragon type char character cards that cost two or more that you play from your hand is reduced by one. Translation's really crazy on that one. Reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one if they cost two or more, if they have Celestial Dragon type. So we're getting hand reduction, which is, I think, a first on a type that I feel like is going to be pretty rude because the Celestial Dragons are pretty rude in general. Um, or I would say shitty people in, in, in the universe. So we're getting a shitty style of play where they're going to reduce the cost of their own cards. And, well, it's a one-cost uh, stage, so we'll have to see what happens. Um, I'm hoping to see a lot of stage removal in this set. Black is the only deck or only archetype that has stage removal uh, from last set. So we'll have to get more because some of these stages, like Birdcage, are disruptive and painful and if you don't have a way to get rid of them that's bad you just have to take it and there's no interaction with that part of your opponent's field i think it's coming because there's just 
a lot in this set. We are going to finish it with uh, Upper Yard Yellow Stage, cost one, Sky Island, on play. Look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal up to one with Sky Island type, and add it to your hand. Then place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. This is a stage based off of this. Yeah, it's a stage that is looking at the top five cards of your deck. Um, it's a stage that only has an on play effect. That's weird. Why not make it an event card? I'm trying to, like, it doesn't say that you can activate it on your own turn. So you play it once into the stage position and then it just sits there. I don't get it. Uh, this is an event card for most other decks. So it's a weird one. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's an event or a stage, I guess. just means that they're not going to get a useful stage. I don't know. That's weird. That's super weird placement for this card. We'll have to see what happens. Um, I think it gets played because uh, Whitebeard Pirates gets played. The event card, um, at least in Whitebeard. Um, so we have a chance to get these event cards being played. For this deck, it kind of makes sense to play it. You only get one activation as a stage. That's weird to me. Um, but that's all I have for card reveals and news this week. This was a especially long one with 14 cards to be talking about. If you're still here, thank you for watching. Let me know what you're most excited for in this set in the comments down below. And until next time, peace. Thanks.